Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 11 for February the 14th, 2021. We're still in Unit 3 entitled The Call of Women. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Showing Loyalty. Our devotional reading is taken from the Book of Romans, Chapter 4, uh, verses 13 through 25. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 15, verse 40. Also, Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 9. The Gospel of Luke, chapter uh, 8, verses 1 through 3. And also, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 10 through 18. Our print passage, uh, where we will be studying today, will be coming from uh, three of the Gospels. The first one is Luke chapter 8 verses 1 through 3, uh, Mark chapter uh, 15 verse 40, and then uh, the Gospel of John chapter 20 uh, verses 10 through 18. Our key verse reads, The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. That is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verse 1b, and verse 2. That's from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to discern Mary Magdalene's mot motivations uh, for committing her life to Jesus. Secondly, to appreciate the sacrifices Mary Magdalene made in order to follow Jesus. And then thirdly, to embrace a lifestyle of wholehearted discipleship. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled, A Working Disciple. Uh, the second outline is entitled, A Weeping Disciple. And then the third outline is entitled, A Witnessing Disciple. As always, we are always grateful and thankful to God for yet another day and opportunity to continue to engage you in his word today. Uh, we certainly thank God for each and every one of you that have uh, participated in this uh, format of uh, Pleasant Green to continue to reach out uh, to engage uh, you in the word of God so we might be edified. And we want to encourage you now to get your Bible, uh, be prepared to take some notes. We have quite a bit that we want to share with you today. Uh, we want to be able to understand, uh, as we're drawing from uh, our last Sunday's lesson, uh, Jesus dealing with the Samaritan woman. Uh, today we move a little bit further uh, in the loyalty or the commitment of women uh, during the life and ministry of Jesus. Uh, and so we hope that uh, something is shared today, today that will be an encouragement to you. But I want to read some of this biblical context for this lesson and then we're going to get into uh, our outlines. But just as the Samaritan woman was among the first of whom Jesus revealed himself as Messiah that's in the Gospel of John chapter 4 uh, verses 25 and 26 Mary Magdalene was the first to witness his resurrection uh, Jesus delivered Mary Magdalene from uh, seven demons but the scripture uh, they do not specify the nature of the oppression um, whether suicidal tendencies, mental illness, depression, or uh, physical infirmity or something else. Uh, when the scriptures are silent, there is no need to speculate. Uh, also, false claims uh, that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute or even Jesus' wife uh, have no biblical basis whatsoever. But what is known uh, is that Mary was from uh, the town called Magdala in Galilee, hence the name Mary Magdalene. So Magdala was a thriving center 
for the fishing industry and a manufacturing uh, center for wool and uh, woolen dyes and but uh, uh, it should be noted after her transformative encounter with Jesus Mary went on to lead a group of women who provided for Jesus and his followers uh, from their own resources uh, so the Bible clearly affirms that Mary Magdalene was a dedicated committed and loyal follower of Jesus to the very end there are three particular Marys that uh, we want to mention to you that are a part of Jesus ministry um, that we can uh, want to make sure that we are uh, at least talking about the right Mary uh, we know uh, that uh, Mary his mother was one and her sister the wife of Cleophas uh, and then uh, or a common interpretation identifies Salome as the sister of Jesus mother uh, thus making her Jesus aunt and then also as we deal with today Mary Magdalene uh, was one of his uh, uh, companions uh, as we think about this lesson today I want us to think about the fact that uh, as we outlined in the uh, context here uh, Mary Magdalene uh, or Mary of Magdala was uh, delivered uh, which was the basis for her engagement uh, after the Lord had transformed her you know ministry or the administration of Jesus Christ and I know uh, you have heard over the years that uh, there is church work and there is work of the church uh, both of these are key uh, in the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ and so are the administration if you will of Jesus Christ So, as we think about this lesson today and as we engage in this narrative today I want you to think more broadly about what does it actually take for ministry to function what does it take for the administration of Jesus Christ to go forward uh, who is supposed to oversee if you will or, or who is responsible um, uh, for the furtherance uh, uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ or the administration and we find that uh, resources are critical and I know we hear a lot about financial resources it does take that but it also takes three things that I want you to think about um, uh, as, it, as it relates to this lesson it takes a committed individual some someone who is motivated someone who is committed right their life to Christ uh, the ministry also needs sacrifices these sacrifices uh, could be financial they could be uh, our personal efforts uh, uh, our time uh, whatever it takes to make sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, uh, continues in a way that 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 people are transformed as a result of our transformation I hope that makes sense to you and then the third thing that that ministry needs or the administration of Christ needs is a lifestyle uh, we need people and this is the uh, basis here of this woman Mary Magdalene uh, Mary of Magdala she her life as she knew it was changed by Christ she was delivered uh, uh, and so her lifestyle after that deliverance that transformation was different and she committed that transformation uh, or that transformed life to the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ alright so let's get into these outlines today the first one we're talking about a working disciple this is taken from the gospel of Luke uh, chapter 8 verses 1 through 3 and also Mark chapter 15 verse 40 and I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says 
After these, after this, Jesus traveled about from one town uh, and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, verse 2, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Uh, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them uh, out of their own means. So we're talking about women. We're talking about these individuals. Uh, uh, and so we can see how uh, uh, universal, if you will, the message of Christ is. It impacts men. It impacts women. Uh, it impacts children. Uh, and, and once these women have been delivered, they have rededicated, recommitted their lives. Their motivations have changed. And they have such a transformed life that they are willing. The Bible says these women were helping to support them. Uh, what were they helping to support? Well, they were helping to support the proclamation of the good news of the kingdom of God. That is very clear uh, uh, as Jesus' fame and popularity grows as he uh, uh, continues to be itinerant, moving about. Uh, uh, these women know they are, have been impacted in a personal way uh, uh, by the message so much so they have been delivered by the message they have been delivered by the power of the message they have been delivered by the proclamation of the kingdom of God which encompasses deliverance you know we we have to share this uh, with people uh, 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 who are struggling with conditions in their lives uh, that God has the power uh, to transform any condition and any life and so as we proclaim uh, this is not just a theological aspect this is one that takes on a powerful transformation if in fact we believe the message if in fact we internalize the message then that message or that proclamation for that potential believer is going to turn into a manifestation of that power of that message and so we have to understand that God intends for people to have an actual experience with the message this is something that we can uh, uh, all uh, uh, underscore in our lives those of us that have been saved we have been impacted we salvation uh, I like to characterize it uh, as an experience uh, it is a, a progressive experience we die daily the the power of the message or the power of the Holy Spirit is working in our lives transforming us uh, 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 literally mortifying the old nature uh, 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 so that that regenerate nature which we we see active in these women takes form takes shape in a practical way that they are now furthering they want to see other people uh, saved they want to see other people delivered they want to see other people impacted the way that they have been impacted I hope this is making sense to you but if you would I would like for you to turn very quickly with me to Luke chapter 1 verse 37 this is very familiar to us and as we think about what has happened in, in, uh, to these women and, 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 and the message if you will uh, 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 that we want to be able to engage those who need uh, these kind of uh, 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 messages or and the power thereof is is found in Luke chapter 1 uh, verse 37 which clearly states here uh, according to Luke for with God nothing nothing will be impossible and this is what we have to actually share with people today through the message uh, 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 somewhere along the line these women 
heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, they embraced the message by faith and they were delivered and now they their lives have been turned around and this is what ministry needs today. Uh, uh, this is what our churches need today. Our churches need people uh, whose lives have been uh, transformed so they can in turn, uh, you now become a, a, a reinvestment, if you will, into society in a way that you can share with people what has happened to you and what is possible for them through the gospel of Jesus Christ. But according to Luke uh, uh, chapter 7, verse uh, 36 through 50, Jesus was anointed by a woman whom others regarded as sinful. In the dialogue, Jesus forgave the women of her sins, which prompted the Pharisees in the room to question his authority to forgive sins. So Jesus forgave uh, uh, individuals who embraced his forgiveness, who embraced the forgiveness that he uh, 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 exhibited for us on the cross by uh, taking on our very uh, 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 a, a, a guilt nature of our sins upon himself so as to uh, 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 show us that we had been forgiven of our sins and these individual women uh, they are embracing this message this is powerful when we think about preaching the gospel we are looking for people to embrace it to internalize it to believe it so they can be delivered from what ails them uh, so they can be transformed, so they can be incorporated into the administration uh, uh, or the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is this is <laughs> this is something that we have to continue to sow into, that we might reap the benefits. When when we think about the Great Commission, uh, uh, according to the gospel writers, they are told to make disciples, to reproduce what they are. And so this is what these women are doing uh, in terms of furthering the gospel. They are reproducing what they have experienced. Uh, and so they are providing or they are uh, 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 sacrificing out of their own resources to make sure that whatever is needed for this gospel to go forward is provided so it can spread. And this is what uh, 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 all of us that say uh, that we have been delivered by Jesus Christ, what role do we now have to play in the administration of Jesus Christ? What are we giving back, if you will? What are we adding to the furtherance of the gospel? And sometimes uh, uh, we don't have money, if you will. We don't have the financial means. But it should not end there. You have a gift. You have something to bring to the table if it's nothing but divine encouragement if it's nothing but a smile if it's nothing but an embrace if you, we need whatever God has given you whatever gift you have we need to add that uh, to the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ and so I hope that is clear uh, to us as we think about this lesson so uh, uh, one may gather from Jesus' interactions with people uh, and the content of the Sermon on the, the Mount that Jesus frequently preached love, forgiveness, healing, wholeness, uh, and relationship with God the Father. You can see this in, in Matthews chapter 5 uh, through 7 is the entirety of the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount. But these people... Uh, uh, as Jesus moved from town to town uh, uh, with his disciples, uh, 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 there were other uh, women who who had been impacted uh, uh, by this message. Uh, as uh, Mark chapter uh, 15 verse 40 says, some women were watching from a distance, and among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James uh, the younger and of Joseph and Salome and so uh, uh, these individuals were, were watching this 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 uh, 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 ministry uh, in real time they were watching uh, what was going on they were looking on 
uh, uh, and getting involved uh, in ministry. And that's what we need today. Uh, we need people who will get involved on some level. Uh, 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 and so uh, they, they wanted to do something, right? And so these, the women were faithfully uh, present at the crucifixion of Jesus as he suffered and died at Calvary. Uh, while many women of the Gospels were unnamed, these disciples of Jesus were named, indicating their level of status and significance by connecting them to their husbands, uh, their work roles, and other identifying markers. So Luke is very careful to mention that these women were workers within the ministry and added necessary support to meet the needs by supplying whatever they could uh, from their own resources. It is critical for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I commend those of you who are wearing multiple hats, right, in the, in the, in the, in the body of Christ. You're doing multiple things. You're in multiple uh, functions of the church. And, and, and I know that it is taxing you as it is these women here who are providing uh, 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 from their own resources and you know uh, uh, it, I, I know that many of us we don't have much and we don't say a lot but we're uh, uh, we should be encouraged today that God sees the level of your commitment God understands God is, a, is, is fully aware of your sacrifice and I just want to encourage you uh, uh, to continue to be a blessing as God has provided. He has always supplied our needs. He has always added uh, uh, to us. He has always given to us so that we can we will be able to continue the things that uh, we have been engaged in to further uh, the kingdom of God. It, it's, it's not for us. It's, it's for other people. Uh, right it's it's for the the furtherance of the good news for the proclamation and it does take resources to go forward we should not minimize that right the question is we are often tempted to give greater honor to frontline or visible roles in ministry explain the importance of the ministry that Mary Magdalene and other women fulfilled for Jesus we would never have known this is this uh, text here is exclusive to Luke. Uh, uh, he is careful. He brings it out. He mentions it. And sometimes, you know, we, we may get a little discouraged because uh, we are not recognized because we're always by the scene, uh, behind the scenes. Our name is not blinking in lights, as it were. But, uh, but God knows the intent. And as I shared with you earlier in this lesson when we were talking about the lesson aims and what the administration of Jesus Christ needs, uh, it exposes our motivations. And so uh, what are the motives of, of our engagement in ministry today? Are we uh, self-seeking or are we just, we just trying to further the gospel of Jesus Christ? And though no one will ever mention your name, uh, just like God inspired uh, uh, Luke to mention these names, God knows who you are. God knows the weight, the burden, and the sacrifice of your commitment. And so we just want to be able to pray that the Lord will continue to uh, bless you, that you might continue to be a blessing. The second outline is entitled, A Weeping Disciple. And so now we move from the uh, Gospel of uh, Luke and uh, Mark. We move to the Gospel of John chapter 20 verses 10 through 13 and again from the NIV translation and this setting here moves to the crucifixion and keep in mind as we think about these women uh, they were following Jesus till the end verse 10 then the disciples went back to where they were staying now Mary stood outside the tomb crying as she wept she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, and one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? 
They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. You know, when the Lord delivers you, I can say this from personal experience. It makes me seek him out. You know, I recognize the fact, and I know that Mary does in this case. There is nobody that could have done what the Lord did for her. And even though he has been crucified, and she is still looking for him, she is still seeking out uh, 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 that 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 touch, if you will, that 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 blessing uh, that he is bestowed upon her, and she is upset. I don't know if you've had that to happen uh, in your life that the Lord has touched you and you. I, I can tell you Mary longs to be touched again. She longs to be acquainted again. She longs to be embraced again. She is still seeking out her Savior, the one who set her free, the one who delivered her. She is still following him to the very end of his life so but the disciples returned home not understanding what had occurred after Mary had visited the tomb and found it empty at least two of the disciples had run to the tomb and confirmed that it was empty when they left look at this Mary remained at the tomb and stood outside of it weeping while she was overcome with grief and still weeping, she stooped down and looked again into the tomb. And as she looked, look, she got a revelation. Two angels uh, in, white, in white apparel sitting where Jesus' body had been laid, one at the head and one at the feet. Seeing her tears, the angel asked, why are you crying? So Mary replied that someone had taken away, implying that someone had stolen the body of Jesus, whom she called Lord, and she had no idea of where to find him. Look at that transformed life. Look at that faith. Look at that belief system. Look at that impact of that deliverance upon her life. This woman is inquired. She has launched an inquiry. She wants to find who has stolen her Lord. You know, it, it, this is this is really a, a, a compelling here to anyone who has been touched by the Lord uh, uh, to engage this way. But she understands here that something uh, 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 to her is wrong, and so. Uh, the text does not indicate that Peter and John saw uh, the angels that spoke to Mary. So it seems that the angels appeared only for Mary's benefit, uh, who was in such a state of grief and was weeping so profusely that she did recognize the, peculiar, the peculiarity of their presence. So it is possible that the angels appeared as human strangers as Mary continued to speak to them without apparent awe or surprise. So the impact of deliverance, the role that we play uh, is highly dependent upon how we have been impacted by the Lord, the depths if you will of this transformation in our lives has moved this woman in a profound way uh, and she is engaged here doesn't quite understand the full context of who she is speaking to or the all the parameters around Jesus uh, resurrection but she's looking she's grieving and she's looking and she's being comforted uh, there's a lot to be said about us for uh, who weep before the Lord uh, who long for him uh, who engage in prayer in such a way that uh, uh, God needs to comfort us because we we miss him and this is what was happening with the disciples with the men if you will in John chapter 14 they were upset uh, uh, and Jesus had to tell them let not your heart be troubled right believe in God believe in uh, believe also in me these individual men were upset because Jesus was uh, 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 departing uh, from them and they they wanted to uh, uh, to stay connected and this is the same thing that uh, uh, that Mary is experiencing here so 
uh, the question here is it possible to be so distracted by painful or other emotions that you miss a significant occurrence possibly an angel of God some angels appear to us as strangers your biblical reference would be Hebrews chapter uh, 13 verse 2 finally a witnessing disciple we're still in the gospel of John chapter 20 verses 14 through 18 and again from the NIV translation at this time still talking about Mary she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not realize that it was Jesus he asked her woman why are you crying who is it you are looking for thinking he was the gardener she said sir if you have carried him away tell me where you have put him and I will get him Jesus said to uh, her Mary she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic Rabboni which means teacher verse 17 Jesus said do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to the father go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God look at this in verse 18 Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord and she told them that he said these things to her she has been comforted she has uh, 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 received a message a revelation from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he commissions her to go tell the disciples right go tell them this news and she does it so she has been comforted her grief has been uh, 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 relieved and 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 the Lord gives her an assignment you know we never know sometimes why people are functioning in ministry what motivates them what has been revealed to them and we have to allow uh, uh, and certainly be open to the fact that God is moving on the hearts and minds of his people in a way that they're doing things that perhaps seems out of the norm to us but she is obedient her deliverance her encounter with her Lord and her Savior is motivating her back to what I said to you early she's motivated because of this she is committed right she is uh, uh, obviously making the sacrifices and her lifestyle is constantly being transformed right God has the capacity to do this in our lives and we have to be uh, uh, those types of individuals that encourage people who are moving uh, by the grace of God who are providing who are uh, uh, we never know uh, what individuals are going through to make the sacrifices and the commitment all of us are going through something right that's no that that's a no-brainer if you will all of us have a, 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 a full plate if you will all of us have trouble in our lives but we are continuously persevering and we're doing whatever we can we are fulfilling our roles we are adding our logs to the fire we are playing uh, the piece of the puzzle that we are in the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ and all of us are dependent upon one another to do our part right we 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 are not asking you to do the whole thing certainly God is not but the role that he has given these women to play they are playing it if you will to the full they are fulfilling it to the full they are doing uh, 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 why uh, uh, and what the Lord has commanded and I would push to share this it's because they love him right 
This is, this is what the lesson is speaking to us today. These women love the Lord because he first loved them. They love him because he delivered them. And those of us that are in a relationship with the Lord and, and we have been delivered by him, that deliverance is precious to us. I will never forget the Lord the day that the Lord set me free. I will never ever forget what I felt. I will never ever forget the, to uh, the, the touch of the Lord. I will never ever forget that when I was at uh, 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 my extreme, the Lord stepped in on time. This woman had been delivered she had seven demons and we are we would question her as to why she is doing what she is doing she has seven spirits in her spirit controlling or manipulating or she these are unclean spirits right seven we could push to say she was out of control so why are we questioning? Why would we question this woman who is on the move trying to find the one? I would be looking for him. <laughs> if he delivered me from seven demons, I want to find him. Right? I want to stay in touch with him. Nobody could have done this like the Lord. So he cured these women who had evil spirits and diseases. Why are we questioning this? Let the Lord have his way, right? Let the Lord have his way in your life, right? He did something in your life, in Mary's life, that no one else could do. So let us not be so critical of what she used to be but let us applaud her for what she is now. We could all dig up one another's past, but look at her now, right? She is a better quality of individual because of the, the deliverance of Jesus Christ setting her free. So let her go, let her go, let her move according to the spirit. And so if the Lord have sent this woman to go back and tell the disciples what he told her to tell them, we ought to let her speak, right? We ought to let her talk about it. We ought to let her share, right? We should not look at the length of her hair, but the content of her message, right? We should look at who is infusing this message. She didn't say it was her. She's going back to say what he told her to tell her to say and we ought to let that play out right we ought to want to hear that we ought to want to know what the Lord dropped in her spirit right so she went back right she went back the Lord I've seen him right and she told them that he had said these things to her that encouraged them right Perhaps they were still in distress about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Perhaps they were afraid, locked up in their houses, not knowing what they were going to do next or if they were next. But this woman went and did what these angels, what they were instructed to tell her to do. She did it, right? She did it. She did what the Lord told her to do. She was obedient, right? So we thank God for this lesson. Uh, I, I do want to give you a few scriptures that I would uh, 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 encourage you to read. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Joel chapter 2 verse 12 and Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 church work and the work of the church 
they need these three things they need motivations of commitment they need sacrifices right of our lives and resources and thirdly they they need a lifestyle that goes to the very end let's pray father god we thank you for this lesson today this narrative today that has inspired us to see you father in a way that perhaps we didn't see before to understand in a way perhaps that we didn't understand before but certainly to appreciate the touch of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the touch that only you can provide it, it, it allows us to appreciate the power that you have that you have the capacity even if we don't think you can the Bible is clear that you can the, the, the Bible is clear that you have all power in heaven and earth in your hands father I just pray and I thank you for each and every woman that is listening who was discouraged I, I, I pray for those individual men who have been discouraged who felt like they were overlooked and not appreciated for the things that they have done to further the gospel of Jesus Christ but father we are comforted by the fact that you know all things you see all things you know the intent and the motives of our hearts and our actions father we pray that you would add to those who have given out of their out of their lot they've perhaps given their last father we know that you will give it back to them pushed down shaken together and running over father we thank you for this lesson today we are con continuously praying for those who have been affected in this pandemic praying for those on the front line praying for our country praying for our leaders and father we are praying for our faith today that it holds that it grips that solid rock father we are praying that we would be encouraged today that you have not left us alone yes we are in troubled times but troubled times have always been present Jesus said as long as we were in this world we would have tribulations and trials but he told us to be of good cheer for he have overcome the world father we pray for all of the believers today every family today and all that we're going through today we commit our way to thee and trust in thee that you would give us the hope and encourage our hearts that we might stay faithful to the very end in Jesus name we ask and pray amen so again until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again we say God bless you